This is the first video on second order responses. The focus will be on overdamped systems. Let's consider then that we have equations or models of this form here. A d2x dt squared plus b dx dt plus cx equals f. And what we want to know is how does x of t behave? And in particular, how does the behavior tend upon depend upon the model parameters that might be a, b and c. We might want to produce a rapid sketch or impression of this behaviour for x of t when f of t is zero or a constant. Now we're actually only going to deal with f of t as a constant because zero is an alternative form of a constant. This particular video, video one, is looking at scenarios where there's no oscillatory components, so there's no sinusoids in x of t. Sinusoids will be dealt with in later videos. Let's look at a summary of the solution first. Now remember, we said there's no oscillation, so we're going to assume that the characteristic polynomial has got real roots. So here's our differential equation, a d2x dt squared plus b dx dt plus cx equals 1. We're going to form the characteristic polynomial. There it is, ap squared plus bp plus c equals 0. You'll notice that's based upon the coefficients of this differential equation. If we solve that and get these two roots here, p equals p1 or p2, then they are real if b squared is greater than or equal to 4ac. And that's the assumption that we're going to make. Now, once you've established that, you can actually show that a general solution to this differential equation is given here. x of t equals a e to the p1t plus b e to the p2t plus 1 over c. Now I'm not going to prove that that's a general solution because that's something you might want to do in a mathematics lecture. But what you'll notice is the simple observation. There's an exponential which relates to each root of the characteristic equation plus a bit here the 1 over c, which depends upon the right-hand side. Now, we're going to assume zero initial conditions throughout, mainly because we're interested ultimately in control scenarios where initial conditions are not so important. And what we want to do is actually solve exactly for the unknown constants, capital A and capital B. So what I've done is I've substituted my solution there it was, the solution we did on the previous uh, page, a e to the p1t plus b e to the p2t plus 1 over c. And I've substituted into that my initial conditions, x of 0 equals x dot of 0 equals 0. So if I do that first one, this is what I get. 0 equals a plus b plus 1 over c. If I differentiate, which is what I've done here, so I differentiated x of t and then substitute in the initial condition. I get this, 0 equals p1a plus p2b. And you'll notice we now have two linear simultaneous equations in the two unknowns, capital A and capital B. So let's solve those equations. So first of all, 0 equals p1a plus p2b can be used to give me this. a equals minus p2 over p1 times b. If I now put this value of a into here, rearrange and rewrite, this is what I get. p2 over p1 minus 1 all times b equals 1 over c. So I can now solve for b in terms of little c, and once I've solved for b, I can solve for a. So putting this all together, this is what we get. Capital A equals minus p2 over little c times p2 minus p1. And capital B equals p1 over c into brackets p2 minus p1. Substituting those back into my original expression, this is the solution for x of t. So x equals 1 over c, and c, you remember, was a parameter in the equation, times 1 plus 1 over p2 minus p1 times, in brackets, p1 e to the p2t minus p2 e to the p1t. And you'll notice here, if I underline it, this interchange p1 multiplies the exponential of p2 and p2 multiplies the exponential of p1. 
The response includes two exponentials. And what's the key thing that might be interesting here? The exponential with the slowest time scale, which actually is the one with the smallest pi, has the largest coefficient. So if I make this clearer, if p2 is bigger than p1, then the coefficient of e to the p1t is bigger than the coefficient of e to the p2t. So the slowest exponential has the biggest coefficient and therefore makes the biggest contribution to the response. Let's look at a numerical example. So we've got x double dot plus 3x dot plus 2x equals 1. Here's my characteristic equation. p squared plus 3p plus 2 equals 0. If I solve for that, I get p1 equals minus 1, p2 equals minus 2. I now tell myself, OK, this means I've got a general solution of this form x equals a e to the minus t plus b e to the minus 2t plus some constant capital C. Now, I can use steady state analysis to say that by inspection, capital C equals 0.5. If you're not quite sure where that's come from, I've essentially said 2x equals 1 in steady state because at steady state, x double dot and x dot are both 0. Next, I use my first initial condition, x of 0 equals 0, and that gives me a plus b plus c equals 0, or a plus b equals minus 0.5. I use my initial condition, x dot of 0 equals 0, and that gives me minus a minus 2b equals 0, or a equals minus 2b. Solving those two linear simultaneous equations, I get this. b minus b is minus a half, a equals minus 1. And therefore, my ultimate solution is given here at the bottom, x equals minus e to the minus t plus 0.5 e to the minus 2t plus 0.5. Now, what do you notice? The e, I'm going to write it here, e to the minus 2t is faster than e to the minus t. And therefore, as expected, it has a smaller coefficient. The coefficient is 0.5, whereas the coefficient of e to the minus t of magnitude 1 or is actually minus 1. Let's compare it with this generic formula we had. So we said you could write this generic formula in terms of the time constants. So x equals 1 over c into 1 plus 1 over p2 minus p1 times p1e to the p2t minus p2e to the p1t. If I substitute in the values I had, p1 is minus 1, p2 is minus 2, little c equals 2, put all those numbers in, this is what I get, x equals a half into 1 plus 1 over minus 1, minus e to the minus 2t plus 2e to the minus t, and I simplify that out, and what do you notice? The same solution that we just had before. Now this page has got some problems for you to try by yourself. So we're just going to leave it open long enough so you can press the pause button on your video in order to write them down. That should be long enough. So the next slide, just so you know not to look at it, is going to give some hints. So don't go to it until you're ready for the hints. So here are some hints as to the sorts of solution you might expect without actually giving all the details about what the capital A and capital B are. Again, I'll pause. We've done this just long enough for you to pause and take the numbers down. So some conclusions. We've demonstrated how to solve a second order ODE with a constant input and zero initial conditions where the roots are real. We've shown that the solution has a simple algebraic form. Now, because these videos ultimately focus towards feedback loops, you'll see that we've used zero initial conditions, and we'll do that throughout. Adding non-zero initial conditions is just numerically cumbersome and doesn't offer any particular insight. We note an important point here that a constant input is actually equivalent to a step response. And we also note we've not covered repeated routes.